the Denver Broncos in 2022 were a very interesting case because obviously when you make a big time offseason trade like Denver did last year in the offseason, when you go out and get a quarterback from the Seattle Seahawks in Russell Wilson, you give up a big haul to bring him into the mile high. It seemed like all of your quarterback woes since Peyton Man retired after Super Bowl 50 were finally going to be resolved. Because you're bringing Russell Wilson to complement an offense that seemed like it had a really good core with running backs Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams and a receiving core led by Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and what Russell Wilson was lacking in Seattle. A good offensive line. Good protection. And on the other side, you still have that strong defense from 2021. And then you added even more with the likes of Randy Reed Gregory um, in the pass rush and D- D- defensive tackle DJ Jones and K1 Williams in the secondary. So it seemed like, you know, with all those additions, um, and of course, especially Russell Wilson, and you got a new head coach in Nathaniel Hackett from the Green Bay Packers um, when it, in his time as an offensive coordinator, um, it seemed like the Broncos were going to be well equipped to challenge the Kansas City Chiefs in the AFC West, probably they be the biggest challenger um, to the Chiefs in the division. And then the regular season came. And all I can say about the Broncos all season long, I guess it could be described in seven words. Yep, just seven simple words. Let me just say this. It was a little bit more understandable that Russell Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett, you know, they're still experiencing a little bit of growing pains when it came to the first regular season game. Ironically, that first regular season game was, interestingly enough, in Seattle. Russell Wilson's immediate return to Seattle against the Seahawks. Obviously, not getting that standing ovation, um, getting that Kevin Durant-like return to the Thunder, uh, um, when he, when he was with the Warriors, Russell Wilson kind of got that similar treatment when he came back uh, to Seattle on that Monday night to close out week one. And then the game happened, um, and it ended up being a prelude for what was to come for the rest of the uh, season. Questionable coaching, bad clock management, and a stagnating offense. Now, granted, the stagnating offense didn't really happen um, until... A little bit later in the fourth quarter, but those early quarters, you know, there's a little bit of sign of hope um, with that that Russell Wilson led offense in Denver. But then the stagnating offense, you know, started to carry over um, in the fourth quarter, and then it immediately came into full display afterwards in very uninspiring wins over the Houston Texans and the San Francisco 49ers. And by God, that week three game against the 49ers was. Absolutely putrid football because it looked like Russell Wilson trying to run the offense like he did in Seattle, but he ended up looking like a scared little punk that didn't want to throw the football, that didn't want to throw it to the likes of Cortland Sutton because Sutton was his top receiver that he only trusted in not knowing that Jerry Judy was also a good receiver. Even against weak-ass defenses. And it also became clear that head coach Nathaniel Hackett was well over in his head um, with these weirdly designed plays and going to the wrong running back. That's not Javante Williams. And these, again, going back to those play designs that Wilson didn't do in Seattle. And for Nathaniel Hackett, he couldn't adjust to certain situations and like regress back to those um, questionable coaching decisions that haunted him in that week one game against Seattle. Positively, though, the defense, as it was a year prior, became and remained the team's biggest strength. Um, DJ Jones and linebacker Randy Gregory um, were a strong pass rushing unit, despite um, the team trading away Bradley Chubb, the linebacker, at the trade deadline. And even though they lost uh, corner Ronald Darby to a torn ACL early in the season, you know, the secondary, still a strong unit um, in takeaways and passes deflected. Headlined by a strong safety, Kareem Jackson, and corners Patrick Sertan, the second, and Kwan Williams. 
But, you know, for as strong as a defense as you have, obviously, in the name of the game of the NFL today, offenses win new games. And Denver, for as big of an offseason as they had last year, they came into that regular season massively underperforming, massively disappointing. So they wanted to lose seven of their final nine games after the bye week because why? That offense, everyone thought they would turn the corner, but they still couldn't do jack shit. They still couldn't score a blind eye. Russell Wilson still played like a deer in the headlights, and they had no running game because well, Javante Williams actually was injured. He tore his ACL in week five against the Colts. And Melvin Gordon kept fumbling the ball, kept turning the ball over, and he ended up getting released. So yet there was no running game. There was literally no offense to speak of because Russell Wilson was struggling that much. So it was bad. It was really bad for Denver. And to top it all off, Nathaniel Hackett was finally fired the day after Christmas after Denver got molly so bad by scrubs on the LA Rams. Yes, it took the Rams scrubs to embarrass uh, the Denver Broncos that bad. And it also took Patrick Starr. Yes, Patrick Starr roasting Russell Wilson for the Denver front office and the Walmart ownership group to finally show Nathaniel the Hackett the door. Yes, Nathaniel Hackett wasn't fired earlier than that. No, it took Patrick Starr, <laughs> look, a talking starfish, roasting Russell Wilson and Nathaniel Hackett on Christmas Day to ha- have the Denver ownership group finally show Hackett the Nathaniel the door. <laughs> At least he's gone. At least at least he's gone. I mean, obviously, it sucks to see people fired and all that. But when you're not doing your job and doing it well, sorry, you have to go. So Hackett's senior assistant, Jerry Rosberg, took over as interim head coach. And well, the Broncos, you know, kind of looked more energetic on offense, especially Russell Wilson. You kind of saw what the Denver offense, you know, could have looked like. Um all season long. And it took them the very last game against the Chargers to score more than 30 points. They looked, yeah, like I said, they had more life in that offense. But in the end, it was just a very disappointing season for Denver. And that's why they're the most disappointing team in the NFL 2022 season. Underachieving with all that talent in the biggest way possible. Now, Questions are rightfully abound about Russell Wilson and whether or not he's assistant quarterback of Seattle and Pete Carroll. But I would hold that off until I give it at least next season and perhaps even the next because Denver actually managed to hire Sean Payne, former New Orleans Saints head coach, as its next head coach. No, not Kevin James. (laughs) Not Kevin James as its next head coach. I wish we all did. (laughs) <laughs> but, um, yeah, they actually hired Sean Payne as that head coach. But they did have to give up a, yet another crap ton of draft capital to acquire his services. But at least, unlike Nathaniel Hackett, he is a proven commodity offensively. Um, he has worked with Drew Brees. Let's see what he can do with Russell Wilson. If Payton doesn't end up being the answer that Denver is seeking at head coach and Russell Wilson, then I don't know what is. And then we will know what that answer of whether or not Russell Wilson was just a system quarterback. So now Denver has another big offseason ahead of them. Now that they have what could be a proper head coach for um, Russell Wilson, now they have to like kind of build around that offset. It's kind of retool a little bit. They have a little bit of money, but not that much. They have about $11 million to spend. Um, Not too many key free agents to um, keep track of because the only two that the Denver may be willing to keep around are defensive end Draymond Jones and strong safety Kareem Jackson. Maybe they do want to keep them around. Who knows? Maybe he's a franchise tag. We'll see. 
Um, there are a couple of things to address um, on, in the offseason. Like, they could certainly use um, some more help at running back behind Javante Williams. Um, it was just a shame that uh, he went down to the torn ACL in week five because before that, he was getting the full load. And then Daniel Hackett decided to dick around um, with the running back uh, position because, well, he decided to keep going with Melvin Gordon even though he had serious issues with the, uh, protecting the football. And then Matt, when Melvin Gordon got released, uh, because of that, they used a committee of Latavius Murray, Chase Edmond, and then Tyler, Tyler Beatty, which didn't really work all that well. But Denver should have it starting uh, running back in Javante Williams back, but they got to make sure they have uh, a, a few reliable backups to fill in just in case uh, he gets hurt and, you know, to keep him fresh on the field. Um, you know, they could always retool the offensive line. Um, I mean, it was okay in 2022, but it never hurts to um, get some help for Russell Wilson to keep him upright. You know, he's always a big advocate and usually adamant about having a good offensive line. And added another edge rusher or two in the defensive line. Their pass rush, you know, it's still it's still pretty uh, solid. But long term, you can't always have Randy Gregory... Um, going after the quarterback and you can't always have like just him and DJ Jones, like going straight after um, the quarterback. You got to get some help for them. Um, fortunately for them, um, this free agency class is loaded with names like Marcus Davenport, Brandon Graham, Justin Houston, Jadavion Clowney at edge uh, in the pass rushing community. So, you know, they can get some of those um, names, whether it's in the bargain bin or in, if they can free up some cap space, maybe get one of those big names. So the Broncos at least admitted that the, that the Hangout Hackett experience was a Hackett of a failure. But now this new ownership group and Sean Payne, the uh, head coach, ha now has to prove that they can undo what was Hackett in the last year. That all starts with free agency. And if they can restructure a few contracts, and address some of their key needs in, in in their organization, then I think Denver, in my opinion, should be on track to earning back some respect next season. If not, then we'll probably um, see a lot more of their roasting that they'll get they'll absolutely deserve, like they did this past season. Yeah, that's not what 